you dropped a little nugget there that I want to go back to. You said, you know, there's a difference between sponsors and mentors. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of went on. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the difference because I think both of those are important. I'm, I'm glad you you picked up on that. And uh, this is something I talk about and I it really, I didn't get it until kind of late in my consulting career. So I'll frame it like this. A sponsor will open up an opportunity for you. They'll say, you know what? To, this is this is a great time for you to come and present or for you to be in the room, right? They're the ones that give you the platform, the voice. They may give you some coaching on how to position it, but they're creating a professional opportunity. It, it is a in the spirit of inclusion and growth. A mentor says, let me take you out to coffee. What's working and not working for you? How can I be supportive to you? How's your How's your life outside of this place? It is a more personal relationship focused not on your professional outcomes, but you as the person outcomes. And one of the things that I'm particularly proud of that I do with my teams, I, I did this in consulting and I do it now, is when we do our kind of look, like our, like our planning for the year, right? It's easy, I break it into three buckets. There is a, uh, an organizational objective, right? My team has to do X, Y, and C in terms of very hard deliverables. Um, they need to build this tool. They need to improve this process. That's bucket one. And, and you know, everybody has some responsibility and like all good, you know, smart based objectives, there's like timelines and, and, and whatnot put against that. The second group is how are you going to grow professionally? And this is the connection to sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So are you going to get some opportunities to speak to ELT members or franchise members or, or board people? Like, do you need to go work in a different part of the business and how are we going to get you exposure to that? But it's all about, you know, professionally. And it may be things like, Hey, this is where you need to get um, more of a voice and, and what does that sound like and, and how does that feel and how do you prepare to it? But it's like, it's like personal development versus deliverable based. Mm. And then there's a third category and I make, I make them write this down to me. Give me your work life balance goals. And, you know, um, I'm not going to obviously grade you and compensate that you want it, but like you're a whole person when you come to work. And, and um, whether it's, hey, I really want to have time twice a week to play tennis or pickleball. Or for me, it's like I want to shoot a certain score on the golf course and I need to have some time to practice. Um, I have a guy uh, that works for me that uh, just got engaged and, and he had some very specific things that he wanted to get done to be ready for married life. And so those were the things. And, and like it really... When we do our check-ins as a team, we do them one-on-one -on -one and we do kind of team check-ins. We have this like accountability and I can say to someone, hey, did, did you play tennis this week? Did you make it home to make dinner? That was your thing. Are you doing that? And it like it really connects you in a way of, hey, this isn't just a place I come to work. It's somebody who cares about me and takes interest. And for me, as a person who loves checklists, I know that like I have this protected time on my calendar to check in with my team, the person, not just, did you get this deliverable done? How often do you have those conversations? We have them monthly, but we do team check-ins three times a week, 15 minute standups where we're just, hey, are you doing these things, okay. right? And so, but the actual formal, we review the sheet and it, it's a one pager. Here's the three things you have to do. We do that every month. Wow. Okay. So let's make that pivot over into Papa John. So now you've kind of moved into kind of on the, on the in-house side, right? Has that changed any of your approaches to leadership? Anything that you've learned to, that as you already talked about some things you've taken from your prior experiences yeah. that you've learned that have worked and you're using them, redeploying those. Anything else you've learned to add to the mix that, you know, maybe uh, is unique to the situation that you're in or unique to being on the kind of in-house side? Yeah. So one of the things I talk about is um, people ask me often, Do you, is there anything you miss about consulting? Um, you know, and beyond the like endless supply of hotel points and, you know, upgrades and things like that. Um, one of the things I miss is the power of the per diem. And I don't know if this is like a real thing, but it's like something I've coined, which is 
when I was at any of these firms, my daily rate was significant. And that's not a, that's not a like point about ego. It's a point about that's what the billable rate was. And uh, clients don't like paying consultants money because they would rather build that capability internal. What it means is like it creates this instant urgency, right? Because the faster I get fill in the name of blank of any consultant out of here, the sooner I don't have to pay that bill. And it's it's all about um, it's all about urgency and priority. And then when you're internal, yeah. you have to find a way to communicate the sense of urgency and the the objective of change and the transformation you know, vision without necessarily having the burning platform of, hey, these, this swarm of people are gonna show up and they're charging us a lot of money. So if we don't get them out of here soon. So, you, you know, it, it's more about like, you have to build the relationship and you have to be more crystal on what it what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, I had a, a conversation recently with some of our executive members and, and um, they said something to me and it, that really resonated, which was, you know, Pepper, I didn't really understand what it is that you're doing in this role, but I get it now, which is you're helping us think about the way we work and make decisions as an organization. And I thought, okay, that like for all my years, I wish I could have like come up with that as like, like my own and I'm going to ruthlessly steal it, <laughs> but it, it's a, um, but they were exactly right. Right. Which is, um, in my role of strategy and transformation, I'm constantly helping us think about, you know, what is the objective that's going to move the needle for us as a company on this transformation? Are, are, and are we all clear? Are we all kind of rowing in the same direction on it? Are we, do we understand who's making the decision when we get to those points where decisions are made? Um, and do we have the right capacity? And I think, I think I took, I took this from you actually, which is we need people to work in the business and people to work on the business. Yeah. And do we have the right mix and balance of those? Are, are we taking the people that work in the business and making them work on the business? And they're, you know, they're burning the candle at both ends. And so, you know, we're slowing down our ability to transform and change because we haven't managed the capacity and been clear about what's the most important thing. Oh, 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 oh,